Our next speaker is somebody that you all know very well. This is a man who has stepped up to the plate every time it's important to do so. He's always there for us. He has our backs all the time. He's a true patriot, and when I first got involved in the Tea Party movement, he was one of the first people that I came in touch with, and he's been a dear friend ever since. This gentleman also served as the founder of the Granite State Patriots Liberty PAC. He was our state Republican Party chairman, and he also ran for governor. Please join me in welcoming Jack Kimball. Most of us assigned topics today. Mine was liberty <laughs> and the Second Amendment. <laughs> I don't know why they gave me that topic, I'll tell you. Before I get into my comments, though, uh, there's something I got to say. And, uh, and to all of you, I said some of you know this very dear friend of mine, some of you don't. But we have in the room today a very, very rugged Marine. Uh, his name is Jerry DeLamus, and Jerry came today after sustaining a very serious injury several weeks ago, and he's gone through some setbacks and so forth, but you cannot keep a good man down. Let's welcome Jerry DeLamus here today. I figured that got me a few points since I'm Navy, you know. I want to expand a little more, though, on the reason for our liberty. All through the decades, men like Jerry have answered the call. First World War, Second World War, Korea, Vietnam, and Desert Storm, Iraq, Afghanistan. The blood and the treasure that has been expended on behalf of all of us is quite profound. That blood and treasure cannot be in vain. We can't allow that to happen. My father fought in the Pacific right after Pearl Harbor in every major battle. He was on a light cruiser. Donna Marie's dad, my wife Donna Marie, is sitting right there. He fought, landed in, in Normandy, fought all the way to Germany. They did not do that to have this happen to our beloved country. We have seen in the past six or seven years, and to a degree prior to that, the complete erosion of many of our liberties from Agenda 21, regional planning, NGOs, trying to control all of us, rack them, pack them, and stack them. With HUD money and other federal money, the carrot that always, always is there, that so many state organizations and local organizations are so quick to grab, it's wrong, and we must reject that from now on. We don't need the federal government in our state or local lives at all. We have seen firsthand an IRS department become an arm, a political arm of an administration through intimidation, actually stopping people from being able to vote in recent elections. It's been allowed. It's out of control. We had a head of, an I, of the IRS, Lois Lerner, who lost her emails, and suddenly we found them, and we find out that she is crooked as can be, and she's still walking around free, and the Department of Justice has said, we're not going to prosecute. Nobody is above the law. I don't care who it is. We Americans would like to believe that the people we elect are honorable, that stand on principle, 
And yet we've seen an NSA completely out of control, basically spying on American citizens in a very large way. FISA courts giving rubber stamps to everything that came along. That's not what it, the Patriot Act was meant to do, and we've got to reconsider the Patriot Act going forward. Our own EPA, I call it our own terrorist organization because basically the terror that they inflict upon all of us quite, is quite profound. And I'll just give you one example. Now, you're all paying attention to the terrible drought that's been hitting uh, California. Do you all realize that this is man-made? Do you understand that the Delta smelt is responsible for a lot of this? Why? Well, the taking down of dams the refusal to erect dams so that they could conserve water and save it for drinking water, the, the, the mandation of making sure that your, your water... I'm oh, jeez, you scared the hell out of me. I didn't know I needed any more volume. But, the, but that the water and the rainwater and, and your runoff goes right into the ocean. I mean, how insane is this? There's no need for any of that. And by the way, all the efforts that they put into the Delta smelt makes me want to go eat the last few that are remaining, just for fun. <laughs> they haven't helped at all. They're going to die off anyway, all right? Somebody once said to me, well, Jack, you know, all these farmers and all this farmland has just been destroyed because of lack of irrigation. There's just no water. This is true. And when this first started, many of the farmers were very upset. They came out, many people, I mean, there were some 60,000 people affected by this. And, you know, they were mad. They carried their protest signs because they had shut off the pump house, the main irrigation pump house that provided the water for all of these farms. So somebody said to me, well, what would you have done? <laughs> people who know me know I mean what I say. And I said, well, if I was one of those farmers... I would have got all the other farmers, grabbed my rifle, I would have marched my butt down to the pump house, broken off the lock, turned on the water, and said, come and get me. <laughs> I know it sounds difficult, it really isn't, okay? Because let me tell you, the entire country would know about this, and they would rally to you. And if you don't believe I do that, <laughs> you don't know me real well, okay? We also saw a Department of Justice, I'm sorry, but Eric Holder and his Department of Justice is a disgrace. Starting with Fast and Furious, where they tried to actually set up our own legal uh, gun stores uh, and, and entrap them, and we wound up providing weapons to the drug cartels and others that we use in actual killings and murders and, and, and also the killing of one of our own Border Patrol agents. So. Uh, and this man, I mean, he's unaccountable for anything. You take a look at what happened in Ferguson. As far as I'm concerned, this Department of Justice threw the entire local police departments across the country under the bus. The officer involved in that shooting, as it turned out, was completely exonerated, and yet he had to leave the police force, and he's in hiding. And the person that he wound up shooting, which was legitimate, was a criminal. We are upside down in this country. We are upside down. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being called a racist. You know, I tell you, after, and I, I lived through the Civil Rights Act. I lived through all of that in Martin Luther King. He's got to be rolling over in his grave seeing what he's seeing today. It's, it's a disgrace. None of us are racist in this room, and yet we'll be made to be based upon what we see and observe, and if we, if we disagree with what's going on in Ferguson, well, we're racist. We have to be a racist. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely a disgrace what's happened, not only with, with local politics, but all the way to the President of the United States with his jumping in on these issues. Very quickly, I might add, and every single time, he's been on the wrong side of it. The other thing that we're seeing... You talk about loss of liberty. You talk about the potential loss of liberty. We are seeing the complete militarization 
of our local police departments and state police departments. Dover, New Hampshire, that's where I live, a few weeks ago, and nobody put any word out about it. They had a vote on a bear cat. One minute, good Lord. Okay, he's giving me a minute. That vote, and there were a bunch of us filled the room. We all spoke. There were liberal Democrats there. There were conservatives there. And we all agreed to disagree. We're not going to have this thing. We're going to vote it down. The city council, the fix was in, voted 8 to 1 in favor of getting this thing. And this is Little Dover. This is in Iraq. This is in Afghanistan. And I, and I said to them, this is, this is a federal mandate. No, not a mandate, but the federal government is going to come in. You're going to play with your toy for a little while. And they're going to, when the time comes, come in, and they're just going to take it over. You're not going to have any say in this. Bundy Ranch. Federal government. Overreach. Trying to take a man's property. Actually killing, started killing his cattle. Jerry DeLamus went to the Bundy Ranch. Do you people realize that we have a patriot sitting here today? He and another 11 New Hampshire patriots went out there and became the largest contingent that were defending the Bundy Ranch from little New Hampshire. I'll finish by... My time is up, but I'm going to take another minute. You're going to have to throw me off. Be careful. <laughs> I know. I want to just finish by saying this. Listen, folks. Our Second Amendment is under attack. And the Second Amendment is the protector of our entire Constitution. Without the Second Amendment, there is no Constitution. That's what this is about. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, period. That's what it means. There's no gray area. We have to be vigilant. We have to protect our liberty. We have to protect this great country of ours. She's worth it. Too much blood and treasure has been expended. And thank you very much for letting me come and speak to you today. Only a minute. Thank you very much. She's worth it. Too much blood and treasure has been expended. And thank you very much for letting me come and speak. Cook TV.